I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help us survive and even thrive through the reset that has most definitely already started. And so I'm going to do, there's been a lot of questions that have come in, so I'm going to do an extra Q&A this week. And I'm going to start with Jeff G from Live Chat. And he asks, would you please tell us a story of how after the 2008 recession, you were able to use your collectible gold or gold in general to take advantage and buy income producing assets? Well, actually, Jeff, since the central banks went in and started doing QE and did not allow a true bottom to take place in stocks, bonds, or real estate, you might recall that they came out and said where they were going to manage the markets with targeting certain assets for reflation, which would have been those income producing assets. So I did not use my gold or silver for any of those income producing assets. However, I did use some pure asset protection gold that I had accumulated um, at a much lower price because I started accumulating when spot was at about 248. So this was back in like 2002. And uh, of course we saw a, a massive run up in the spot gold price. And I was able to use that to purchase my current home here in Phoenix. So that actually worked out very well, but it is not, it was not really the full, uh, it was not really the full strategy because the central banks by expanding their balance sheets were able to reflate the markets and, and they haven't stopped yet. They haven't stopped yet. So in order for that to occur, that we have to give it enough time where um, all of this, and we're already seeing signs of this, all of this reflation, all of the new money that they're printing while markets are making new highs, it's taking an awful lot more to get some kind of result, either an increase or, you know, markets have kind of flattened out. So just be patient because that's what I am and use this time to accumulate rather than liquidate, not time yet. And DB asks, do you think the central banks will give the big banks a conversion method to move out of the cryptos and into the digital currency? Um, no, what I think is really more likely, if you look on the Bank for International Settlements money flower, there is a small a uh, portion of that flower where they are allowing private cryptocurrencies. What they will not allow it are those private cryptocurrencies to become the new fiat currency. And no, I don't think they will give the big banks any kind of conversion method. And I don't think you're really seeing them load up on them as any kind of long-term play. What they're really doing right now is solidifying a new trading niche in Wall Street, which kind of completely takes away the whole point of the privacy in those private cryptocurrencies. And GA asks, can you please walk us through the calculation scenario of dollar to SDR if the dollar is not one to one, but a portion of the SDR backing? Well, the dollar is a portion of the SDR backing. They're not one to one. But since the dollar is the world reserve currency, they refer to, uh, to the SDR in dollar terms simply because the dollar is still the world reserve currency. The dollar holds not 40% of the uh, currencies in the SDR basket. And the most likely outcome, the most likely future outcome is that that basket will include pretty much all global currencies so that you can trade locally, but use the, I, the SDR internationally and then convert into a local currency. And the way that that would work 
whether it's here in the U.S. or in China or anywhere else, is the same way that the foreign exchange markets work right now. So you can actually see um, SDRs into the dollar or SDRs into the euro, et cetera. It'll work exactly the same way as it does right now if you're traveling and you're converting in you're converting SDRs into any other currency. But it's not, the dollar isn't one-to-one. -one. There are other currencies that are in there. And the dollar share will shrink over time as they open up that currency and add more and more of them to the basket, which is what they're talking about doing. And AB asks, sorry, Lynette, can you tell me about copper pre-1983 pennies? If the price of silver and gold go back to their historical value, do you think copper pennies will also? It wasn't too long ago when you could buy candy with one penny or a gallon of gas with pen pennies. I remember that. Pennies used to be the money of the people, more than even silver. But I never hear what people think copper pre-1983 pennies will go to and if it's worth sorting them out. Well, first of all, I have to tell you that copper is not really a monetary metal. Gold is the primary currency metal. Silver is the secondary currency metal. Copper is more of a manufacturing metal and has indeed been rising in the markets. So there isn't that same ratio, you know, penny to a dollar, it just doesn't quite work the same as the silver to the gold. So, however, having said that, copper being an industrial metal is where the price is really going to be dependent upon manufacturing and the growth in the global economy. And I guess everybody can define growth a little bit differently, but for me, growth would be uh, expanding the economy without even more mountains of debt, because you know there's two kinds of debt. There is self-liquidating debt and non-self-liquidating debt. And the kind of debt that the governments are taking on are non-self-liquidating debt. And particularly, even if they use that for infrastructure, which in theory could generate revenues, the whole problem is, is that the debt is far, far, far outpacing the income. So, um, yeah, I never hear what people think of copper pre-1983 pennies, but it is definitely worth sorting them out because it is still an industrial metal. So go ahead, accumulate them, sort them out, but don't expect them to behave through a reset the way uh, gold and silver behave through a reset. Because in, in that reset, the economies will not be expanding. They will be deflating or contracting. And this is from, so that's this one. Okay. This is a long question. So I am going to take it piece by piece. And this came in through one of the consultants, Sari, and this is from Mike. My wife and I are looking to purchase some property slash home, et cetera. We have hard assets to buy it outright, but do not want to exhaust much of those assets. We keep a small bank account to meet day-to-day -day needs. We have ample income, higher than most retirees, no debt, and a high credit score. So I'm just gonna, since this is so long, I'm gonna break it down paragraph by paragraph. So I am assuming, so hopefully I'm right, that those hard assets that you're referring to are gold. And I faced a very similar situation when buying my bug out house. So let's just go on to the next part of the question to see what he's really asking in here. We have found out that there is almost no one that will loan on bare land. And we have found out that a substantial down is required for home purchases, more than we routine, routinely keep in dollars. Also, lenders have told us 
that to qualify for a home purchase loan, we must provide two months worth of bank statements that show seasoned money. You see how they get you to go in the system and stay in the system? In other words, we cannot sell some gold and make the required down payment to obtain financing, low interest, cheap debt, without leaving the money in the bank for two or more months as required to qualify as seasoned money. Can you, we have some, uh, let's see, we have sold some gold to deposit funds in a bank, so we look good on paper for the lending institutions. As we own our current residence, we are in no hurry. We are still looking for the right land to build on or the right home, and our dollars sit in a bank. So you're you're seasoning it, and I'm thinking you did the minimum amount that you needed to do. As our money sits in a bank, okay, there, here's the real question. As our money sits in a bank, what signs can we look for that may signal an imminent need to withdraw those funds to avert buy-in, runs, or other financial dollar disasters that will befall our currency. You know, here's the thing. They're going to keep as much hidden from you as possible in terms of the FDIC insurance, okay? As long as not every bank goes out at one time and you have those funds below that $250,000 level, then in nominal terms, in other words, your principal will be made whole because you didn't say how much you had in there. If you have more than two hundred fifty dollars in one bank, you don't want to do that. So you want to set up another account in another bank. But we are not going to get, I mean, we're getting so many signals um, and I would say that it's the interest rates because that's really what's going to indicate when the Fed is losing control. That's why we're paying so much attention. And there's a battle that's already going on there. You know, we see the 10-year note go up, then they, we see it being pushed back, up, pushed back. So we're going to see when the Fed finally loses control and we see a breach um, of that. I don't know what that level is. I'm thinking that it's about 3%. But uh, as long as you maintain, as long as all banks don't go out at the same time and you maintain a balance that is less than 250000 then um, at this point, you are probably okay, even in terms of a bail-in as far as your principal is concerned, because they will make that whole simply because they don't want anybody to know that the emperor has no clothes, that they are in deep, uh, deep doo doo, deep, having deep problems. Now, there is a point to it all that is me and many others, yes, are captive to the current financial system. Yes, absolutely. We will have to do things in fiat dollars that we do not want to do, but must to operate. Therefore, it is paramount that the warning signs are known to us. Look, I keep a minimum level in there. If you're going to have to season something, then you're taking bigger risk and you have to do it. Yeah, we are captive. <laughs> we are captive, but not completely. We are definitely captive to the current financial system if you're wanting to use those financial assets like mortgages. Um, so yeah, we are, and there's really not a whole lot that we can do other than do not keep more than the bare minimum in there. Do not go higher than the FDIC insurance and pay close attention to the interest rates, which, which we are doing at this point. It does not appear that the, well, the Fed is definitely losing control. I mean, the Fed is definitely losing control where we wouldn't see interest rates up even as high as they are right now. But I don't think that there is an imminent level of collapse. But when I think back to 2008, honestly, when Lehman went out, I did not, I was watching it. I was paying very close attention to it, but I didn't know any more than anybody else knew because they're not going to make that obvious on any level. We do not really, 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 really know what's happening in the banking system. 
And even more importantly than that, we don't know truly what's happening in the derivative system, which is what I'm going to talk a lot more about next week for next week's deep dive. So definitely stay tuned to that because this will sneak up on us and bam, just like it did in 2008 with that derivative implosion, we aren't going to know until it happens. I wish I had a better answer for you. I really do. So this week I was on with Chris Marcus on the Arcadia Economics and that is out and you'll find the link below and you'll also find it in the blog. Now, I this morning I did I Love Prosperity with Jake Ducey and I'm sure you're really going to like that interview. His interviews that he does with me, I always find really, really interesting because he likes to ask me different questions. So you'll have to tune in to see what that is. But as soon as it's released, we'll, you know, stay tuned to our socials and you'll know when that's live and go watch that. Now, next week, I'm going to be on with two new channels. So I'm super excited about that. I'll be on the Narrow Path Man podcast with Luke McCann and Market Disruptors with Mark Moss. I'm Both of, of those I am definitely looking forward to because you never know what they're going to ask but it's going to be good. Make sure that for a behind the scenes and updates, just to follow me on Instagram at Lynette Zhang and also on Twitter at ITM trading underscore Zhang. We've got our podcast going. You can find us anywhere, anytime, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor Breaker, and lots more. But hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed and turn on those bell notifications. We'll let you know when we're going live. This is the time to share, share, share with all the people that you care about. Because my favorite question, how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? So we try and uncover the truth here so that you get to make educated choices. And of course, you know, I, there's no doubt in my mind. Look at the insanity in the markets. Look at the overvaluations. Well, if we keep doing this, it might get overvalued. Oh, it's such garbage. So you've got to have a properly diversified portfolio. It is absolutely time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we use physical gold and physical silver as the foundation of the wealth shield but also food, water, energy, security, community, and shelter. You need all of those things to have a nice standard of living. So until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.